Okay, this is the M1 paper from October 2022, and it's the question one that we're going to do here. So we've got a railway truck S of mass 20 tons moving along a track towards another truck of mass 30 tons, which is at rest. So I can see straight away this is a collisions question. Um, before the collision, the speed is four meters per second. Afterwards, the two trucks join together, they coalesce. Okay, that's a slightly different um, style of question, but it's still fine. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to find the common speed afterwards, and we need to find the impulse exerted on S. Right, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, what I always do with these questions is draw out a before and after diagram. So before, I've got my trucks. In this situation, this is truck S. It's um, truck T's here. This one's traveling with four meters per second. This one isn't traveling at all, so you can either leave it like that, or I, I always put Norton, but I don't think you necessarily need to do that. Yeah, let's just look at the fact that it says 20 tons and 30 tons. That's not gonna catch me out. I've got to have my units in kilograms, meters, and seconds to be able to keep everything as standard as I want. So 20 tons, is 20,000 kilograms and the other one will be 30,000. So that's the situation before. And then after, we've actually got that the two trucks are joined together. Okay, so copy that one down there. That's gonna be there. And the other one, get my iPad working properly, is joined onto it. So if it's joined onto it, it means that they're gonna have a common speed there, which I'm gonna call V. So it's a conservation of linear momentum question. I always write the acronym using CLM. I tend to write the formula out every time simply because I need this formula to stick in my head. And if I do it every single time I do one of these questions, even when I'm practicing, then it's more likely to get stuck in my head there. This second part here, that would be if we had two objects that didn't coalesce, that didn't join together. I can still use it, it's just the fact that, well, let's actually do it, that I'm gonna do for the first one, 20,000 times four, and then the second one doesn't matter because it's gonna be times by naught, so that's good. Here, I wouldn't do them separately. I'd now say, yeah, obviously that's, 50,000 for the second one, just times by V there. So if I'm doing that, V is nice and easy, just works out to be 80,000 divided by 60,000, which is 1.6 meters per second. That's uh, first part done. Part B talks about finding the impulse exerted on S. S is the 20,000 20, one. So, Impulse, my formula is M V minus U. So I'm looking at these two here. Because they're both going in that direction, it makes sense to me to take that way as being positive. Just to like the naught meters per second, That I don't need to put that on, but I do need to be aware I'm taking a direction as positive, and then as long as I keep everything in that same direction, we'll be fine with the question. So it's the 20,000 one, 20,000. Uh, v was 1.6, U was four. So I'm gonna get a negative answer here, but that's fine. Um, obviously the, it, it's slowed down, so it should get a negative um, answer there. Because of the magnitude, it doesn't matter which way around we do it anyway. Uh, it works out to be negative 48,000, but I'm just gonna say 48,000. In terms of stating the units in the answer, I always use Newton seconds for impulse. So that's my answer for that part. And that second part about talking about the units, if you'd missed the fact that they were tons changing into kilograms, that might have made you go back just at that stage and look at that part. Hopefully that will make sense, that's question one.